All right, hello everybody. We are back on Sandrith Rezur here in Lower Guck, and we're going to make another cleric solo video. Sandrith's level 52, but I wanted to show you a camp that I really loved and had a lot of fun with, I think around level 47-ish, and uh, you could potentially do it a little earlier, and that's the Cavalier. And one of the things that makes the Cavalier camp so cool is that you get a very nice piece of gear from it. Let me, let's take a look. You can get some adamantine epaulettes. Here, I gotta figure out how to show that window. Here we go. And that's like an, that's one of the, that's an awesome cleric item here. And you can get it all by yourself, which feels very nice, doing the ghoul cavalier. Now the cavalier is a shadow knight, so he's got a little bit of a harm touch, but we're clerics, we, we can heal ourselves, it's no problem. His HP is pretty low. Now. Of course, I'm 52, but I'm going to be using the same nukes and stuff, so it's pretty much going to be the same thing. He's got about 1,600 HP, and our Banish Undead is doing about 585. So you got, you know, three, three of those plus a little Expel Undead or Dismiss Undead to finish him off. And the thing is, though, he does have a pet, so we got to worry about that a little bit. Now, I don't actually have any of these epaulettes anymore because, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm usually using the Bloodstained Mantle just because that magic resist is so key. Fighting wizards, and especially fighting down here in Lower Guck, you want to resist those ghoul roots so you can back away from your mobs after you hit them. And when you're fighting wizards, they can still hit you even when you back away, so that magic resist helps to resist their nukes. But, for example, in City of Mist, on the, when I was soloing on the moats there, that's another video I'm going to make later, nothing there is casting anything at all. So in that case, I would take the Bloodstained Mantle out, and I would throw some Opalettes on, get some extra mana, a little bit of extra AC. I'm not so worried about extra mana, though, and the reason is it doesn't help your mana regen, right? So if you've got enough mana to pull off the kills anyway, the extra mana... I mean, I guess it can be a little bit of a lifeline in case you get a bunch of resists or something goes wrong, but it's not as important as the magic resist. But still, it's an awesome piece of gear. I would keep it in my backpack, were I you, and use it in groups when you're not going to be taking hits anyway. Get that extra mana pool. Um, it doesn't change anything cosmetically, obviously. I forgot to summon my food and drink. I prefer to summon them to keep my conjuration up. I'm looking forward to getting that little pet that clerics get at level 54. It's uh, it's not the greatest thing, but it's fun, you know. All right, so I got that stuff. My buffs are up. I'm using Shield of Words, Heroism, and Resist Magic. I don't use my symbols because they use a consumable, and I don't think I need them. I got heals. I got plate. Uh, why waste a consumable? It's unnecessary, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. So let me invis. I also want to show you guys how to get by the bats. I'm sure most people that are familiar with Guck have figured it out. But I want people to come down here. I want some clerics to, to brave themselves up and come down here like I have. So I want to show you how to get by them. Somebody asked me in the comments how to get by the bats. And it is a problem. And unfortunately, there's no secret to it. You really just got to be the right level to the to reduce their aggro range on you so you can sneak by. And you sneak by by hugging the left wall. So let's let's do that right now. I got my invis up. Mine's improved invis, so I'm not as worried about it dropping at all. Oh look, someone's already grinding it out down here. Now this is a more uh, populated time to play than I usually do, so I'm hoping the camp's open. And if it's not, I'll have to stop this video. I gotta get the first person to swim. Ah! Be funny if I just drowned right here. Now which way am I headed now? Oh, wrong way. Okay. I don't know why I hit my camera key there instead of just zooming in. Looks like someone's already cleared bedroom, but usually there'd be undead mobs here, so. You hug this left passageway. From the bedroom, you got those two passageways, right? You gotta hug the left. The bats are right there. They seem close, and they are, especially those ones right there. But I think, I'm guessing 
at 47, which is probably as early as I would come down to do Cavalier, I think you're all right sneaking by them, hugging the left wall. And then you switch over to the right wall after you get past them. Not that it matters, because you got IVU. All right, so we're going to hop down here. Now, usually we hop down to the left and we turn left to get to safe hall. But for Cavalier, we're not going to that side. We're going here. Don't go through to the other side, but go inside this little cubby here. And here you are. This is kind of your staging area for the camp. Um, Cavalier room is right over here. Now, you got three mobs, and this one here is the placeholder. I would wave at him, but I'm worried it breaks invis. <laughs> so, um, now, unlike the Sentinel camp, it's not entirely safe. You got one patrol that comes through here, right here, and I'm going to just get rid of him right now. I like to get rid of him when he's standing right there, and I'm behind this pillar. And the reason is, on the other side of this pillar, there is another patrol that walks by. Watch me resist this nuke here. See? Gotta love the magic resist, man. He's only got 3%. I could probably just beat him down, but I'm going to use a Dismiss Undead to finish him off. Save a little mana. See? There we go. So again, even though I'm 52, and you might, you should be coming down here at a lower level so you can get XP. See that patrol that just walked by over there? That's why I'm behind this, uh, this pillar, so I don't aggro him. I feel like these blood spots on the ground, they denote safe spots to some extent. You'll notice them in the safe hall. And you, if you watch my other video of the Sentinel Camp, you'll notice that that safe hall also has blood on the walls and blood on the floor. So here is it's kind of safer. If I a couple times I was metting, you know, over here, and I aggroed that other patrol over there. Um, so now we got the patrol out of the way. So we got 22 minutes where this area is relatively safe. If I wanted to make it perfectly safe, I would kill that other guy over there. Now, you got enough range on the first mob where you don't need your invis up when you round this corner. And so we can begin calming. Now, Zolgul's are a little higher than the wands. Now, this actually is was a fun camp, and it gave me decent XP at that level. And also, I feel like I made decent money, much more than I expected. Um... And I think that's because they were dropping gems. And I feel like these guys drop more gems than the Sentinel Camp, even though the Sentinel Camp's mobs are higher. So this is actually not a bad camp to make. Just It's not like a real plat farming camp, but you, you, it's not like you're getting nothing. I like to pacify them all so I can pull with a nuke. Obviously, pull this guy, bring him over there, kill him, med up. And then I would pull this guy second, because I just don't like to make mobs run past each other. I'm always a little superstitious, even though I don't think they would actually aggro. So obviously the fight's pretty simple, but you gotta if you didn't kill that patrol over there, you want to keep it in this hall right here, pretty much. Boom. So look, 24% on a Zol from the nuke. Now you saw what I did to the Erd. It was a bit more. Banish Undead. This is the same thing you'd be using at the lower levels, even though I'm 52. Boom. Root didn't break. 53. So we're looking at about four of these. Plus maybe an Expel Undead. And our fight is over. Maybe a Dismiss Undead. We might be able to pull it off with a Dismiss Undead. I'm going to beat him down just a little bit for fun. Nah, I'm going to do the Expel Undead right now. Alright, one down. You notice that if I keep the fight, they're calmed, so it probably wouldn't be a problem anyway. But if I keep the fight along the sidewall, even if they weren't calmed, I'd probably be alright. So I'm going to med up and clear the camp, and I'm going to see if we can get a Cavalier to spawn so I can show you that kill. He spawns a pet. What I like to do is I like to calm everything, including the pet. And then when I pull him, I nuke the pet, and the pet's just gone. So the pet's out of the way right away. He runs up to me. He harm touches me. I root him. If you're a lower level, you might want to throw up a resist disease, a resist uh, cold as well. because Or what, what else do they cast? 
but maybe just to resist disease is enough. So you got to resist magic and resist disease. You might as well give yourself an extra chance to resist the stuff he's throwing at you. But he's not too hard. Let's take a look real quick at him. He's level 36, 16 and a half hundred HP. Uh, he's got a little bit of a harm touch, but he's not too bad. You'll be able to take him. All right, so I'm going to pause the video here and, and see if we get a shot at the Cavalier. All right, guys, after killing about four or maybe even five placeholders, I kind of lost track. I finally got the Ghoul Cavalier to spawn so we can give a shot at getting those adamantine epaules, which are a common drop. Um, I think that's pretty unlucky to take that many kills to get the spawn because I remember camping here just for XP after I already got the, the armor. I didn't care about it and I still got three or four more of them because he kept spawning. So usually he'll come more often than that, maybe every third time or every second, every other time even. So we're going to have to calm it. I'm going to calm this Zolgu Knight. What I realized while killing these placeholders is that this camp is still totally viable. I think I actually may have made a mistake moving over to the Sentinel camp that I did in my previous video because I think the XP was about the same, maybe even better here. Um, these mobs are still conning blue to me, but they take less nukes to kill. And the green ones take like two too big and a, a tiny nuke to finish off. It's not even half of my mana. It's, it takes me down to like 65%, so I can burn through them pretty quick. So here I am giving them the comms. Oh, a resist. All right. Well, this guy is also a blue warrior. Let's hope we get lucky. All right. Now I'm going to calm the pet as well. Now the Cavalier himself. Now first I'm going to pull this uh, Zolgul Knight here. Like I said, I'm, I, I have a feeling he actually would aggro if I pulled the Cavalier. Because the Cavalier, I think he runs down through him on the way to me. The pathing works that way. So we, I think we actually do have to get him out of the way. It's not just my superstition. So let's do that. But... After this, I'm going to take out the Cavalier. So nuke. Alright. So these guys take about three big nukes. No, about four, right? Four big nukes. And then one little duster offer to finish them off. But, um... They resist calm way less than the Dargo Knights I was killing in Sentinel. And I think their XP is nearly, if not the same. Now 7%, I think that's a little much for Dismiss Undead to handle, so I'm going to have to use an Expel. And there we go. Next up, Ghoul Cavalier. See, look, another thing about this camp is I feel like they are dropping way more gems than these than the Dark Ghoul Knights over at the Sentinel camp I was doing. So it's far more profitable here, I feel. Okay, I'm going to pause the video while I met up, and then we're going to calm and kill our, our big boy here, the Cavalier. All right, we're just about ready to go here. And I wanted to say, if you do come here to solo, you kill these three mobs and then patrol, and you want some more pickings. This room over here I find to be good. It's usually got slightly higher level mobs in the Cavalier room, or about the same probably. And you can pacify this guy and that guy from this corner, and after they're pacified, you move up to that corner right there, pacify a guy right there, time it right. There's a patrol that comes a little bit close, but it's not there most of the time. And then you can pull from that room, which is what I did. I pulled a, a blue mob, well, since I had extra mana and was still waiting. And like I said, this might be even better XP than the Sentinel Camp, even at my level. I think I've got enough mana for this myself. Though if you're lower level, you probably want full mana, because he is a little tougher than his level would suggest. You know, with all of, all of his spells and his pets and harm touch and everything. So again, I like to hit them with comms, even though I'm going to pull them. 
just so I get that opening nuke. There's Pat's calm. Now I need to get him. There we go. And I got my resist disease up. Because why not, right? I know they love to disease me. Now the cool thing about this pet is that he dies with a single banish undead. I, maybe even an expel undead can handle him. I don't know. But why? That, that's good enough for me. Alright, Cavalier. Now I... Uh, I didn't get the harm touch because earlier I tried to pull single pull this guy. I forgot how close together I had killed the cavalier that that placeholder and this guy before. I didn't think he had spawned, but he had already spawned. I hadn't looked, so I took the harm touch earlier. But it only took me down to like 65, 70 HP. So you see, he's trying to hit me with everything, but I'm resisting a lot of it. And if you crank your magic resist like I've done. I've got a Jassinth Wedding Ring that gives me 14 magic resist. Um, it really helps. It helps a ton. I think I can't recommend it enough for cleric soloers. I know I heard a lot of people say, don't worry about magic resist. I hear a lot of people say, oh, if it if it doesn't go up to 200, it's not worth... If you don't get 200 magic resist, it's not worth worrying about it at all. I definitely do not agree with that. Um, who cares if you resist everything or not? And there we go, it's a common drop. So you're probably gonna get it every time you see him. Easy peasy. A ghoul cavalier in this room here. There's another blue right there. He managed to land a heat blood on me. Look at my HP. Of course, I'm a bit higher. You probably would be doing this a bit lower, but if you take some hits, throw on a select. I, I think when I was lower, I had my symbol of Naltron on to give myself the extra HP and with a celestial heal over time, you know, the healing dot, it really, it's nice to have that extra HP. You get down to, you know, 60, 50, 40% HP, you can heal yourself up. If you think you're going to have trouble with your, with getting interrupted, you can pull up a stun, maybe sound of force. It still does a good 280 damage. It's an eight second stun, so you're guaranteed to have time to toss a heal on yourself um yeah and that should do it that's the cavalier camp here hope you enjoyed this video um i'm gonna do some more lower guck videos and uh, then i'm gonna head to city of mist to show a camp that i had a lot of fun with the moat over there it's a little hard to get to but once you're there it's sweet as pie and if anything goes wrong you got plenty of time and some tricks to give yourself extra time to camp or gate out. Um, so I will see you next time. Give a little Zaner style wave there. <laughs> Bye everybody.